Hello and welcome. You're tuned in to another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are going to use our two schools of thought format to talk about training in a traditional martial arts style uniform or something else. Stick around. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Of course, I said, Andrew, I'm joined by my good friend, co-host, producer, uh, you wear a lot of hats, my friend, Andrew Adams. Thanks for being here. Are you looking I'm, for a literal hat? Where I'm is your hat? I'm looking for a hat. I don't, I don't have any hats in this room, but I do have lots of hats. I got a hat now. Okay, but I can't wear that one right now. Wouldn't it be so funny if I just had a hat and put it on? And it would be. It would be really funny if we if we had timed that. Man, that bothers so, me. I always have hats. <laughs> okay. It doesn't Thanks. take a lot to derail this show, clearly. No, no. If you're new to what we do, well, welcome. If you don't enjoy levity in your podcast, you will not enjoy what we do. But if you do then stick around because what we do, we talk about martial arts. We talk about traditional martial arts. We are passionate traditional martial artists, and that's what we do here. We serve the rest of you, those of you who are also traditional martial artists with some passion. And if you want to know all the things that we're doing to serve you, please check out whistlekick.com. And of course, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is where to go for everything related to this show and all 900 plus episodes that we have ever done, including photos, videos, links, transcripts, and so much more. All right, Andrew, let's let's get into it. So let's dive two in. schools of thought. We're diving? Diving in. We're diving in. So let's let's break this down. So we're talking about what most karate schools might call a gi or a dogi. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Taekwondo, it might be called a dobak. And on the other side of the coin, we've got, you know, maybe shorts and t-shirts or, you know, some wind pants and a t-shirt. Is that kind of how, how we're framing this? That's how I'm thinking. I mean, I, um, I want to preface this by saying I've never studied any Chinese martial arts, so I don't know how uniform their styles do. Like if, if they have specific uniforms for different things, my experience is with, um, Okinawan Japanese karate style. So yes, it would be a gi or taekwondo or it would be a dobak or tank suit or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's basically everybody wearing the same thing or not. I mean, that's well, a I, I think that's, that's a different question. And I think we need to get this out of the way first because okay, there good. are plenty of martial arts schools that don't have a traditional uniform, but they do have uniformity so in their school. So I'm talking... I, I'm not talking everybody the same, meaning it's the same color. I'm talking everyone wearing a certain type of jacket and pants. A traditional uniform yeah. versus something else. Yeah, but it could That's be. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it could be. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, let's dig in. So I, I grew up traditional uniform, and that was, that was it. We had... You know, we trained, my original school, we trained in this this very, certainly non-air-conditioned, poor airflow, old high school gymnasium where we couldn't open the windows. Oof. And there were some really brutally hot days where, you know, it might be 90 plus outside. And so you can imagine what it was in that building after a few classes. And I think it happened a total of, of five times that I can you know, roughly five times we were permitted to train in our gi pants and our t-shirt. Yeah. So it was always gi. Yeah. And that, that we have very similar um, experiences with that. You wear a gi every single class. There were rare exceptions where you were allowed to wear a t-shirt, but you still had on your pants and your belt. Yeah. We had the rule that if if you weren't wearing your gi top, you weren't wearing a belt. Oh, interesting. I know some schools do that differently. That's that's I, I think that's outside the scope of this. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Our school, we did. We you wear your belt as well, but yeah, the, the majority of the time we were wearing uniform, our gi the whole time. Yeah. 
Now, the schools I know that don't wear something that I think you or I would consider conventionally traditional, right? Because you kind of opened the door there when you were talking about Chinese martial arts, right? There, we, we could we can track back. We can find some some arts. I'm sure that did things a little bit differently where, you know, traditionally we trained in whatever we wore or we trained in farmer's clothes or whatever, right? Like let's yeah. put that aside because that starts to stretch our understanding. And I don't think we need it for the purpose of this conversation. We certainly aren't talking about the benefits of, of uniformity, right? Because if everybody's wearing the same t-shirt, you know, the school shirt and mm -hmm. the school wind pants or, or, or whatever, right? Like, that's uniform. It is a uniform. It is not yeah, a absolutely. what we would think of as a traditional uniform. We'll, we'll put that aside. So really, we're talking about tradition versus yeah. non-tradition. I, I, I think that's a good way to summarize it. Yeah, I think so. And um, it's – I am not a fan of – tradition for tradition's sake like let's why do we do it this way because that's how we always do it okay but why like i'm having said that though i like the fact that we have this uniformity that we all wear the same thing mm. uh but i think it does you need to understand why you wear it and what that entails you know yeah. i think one of my favorite reasons for having a um, a uniform that you would not wear out and about in the world. I think there are a couple things. One, uh, it's the same argument I've heard made about private school uniforms. Mm. Puts everybody on the same page. Nobody, you know, if everybody has to wear the same thing, nobody's judging anybody else for what they wear. Yep. And I'll tell, I'll, I want you to keep going, but I'll have a story about that. Uh, and two, the fact that it is different creates a line between training and non-training, mm -hmm. which isn't always a good thing. You know, we've, we've talked about this idea that, you know, training needs to be brought out into the world and, and everything. But after many years of putting on a martial arts uniform, it puts me in a different mode. I don't have to work very hard to, I guess, be ready to train because just putting on that uniform brings back all these years of training and I exactly, become yeah. ready. <clears throat> yeah. It's my super suit, as, as our friend Craig likes to talk about. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, and so I, for those that don't know, I worked in a private school for a number of years. <clears throat> and I grew up in public school where you can wear whatever you want. And when I started working at this private school, they didn't, they actually didn't have a uniform, but they did have a very strict dress code. So all the boys had to wear a shirt, a button down dress shirt with a tie. Couldn't wear jeans. You had to wear some sort of not, not I don't want to say dress, quote unquote dress pants, but they had to be khakis or dockers or like not something. Denim. Yeah, not denim. Um, and it couldn't even be like the dark black denim like no mm -hmm. denim um all of the girls had to wear a shirt with a collar a blouse with a collar um or it could be a dress but it had to have so many the sleeves had to be so long like there were there was a dress code but it wasn't a uniform and i came from a public school background growing up and i thought this is dumb but i work here now so i have to enforce it that's fine after a couple months the school had what's called a dress down day where they would raise money for some charity and you could come to school dressed in anything you wanted. I mean, there were still, you couldn't have profanities on your shirts and stuff, but sure. you could wear jeans and a t-shirt, but you had to pay a dollar. Right. And so mm -hmm. they would collect this money and would go to a charity, which is great. I absolutely noticed a difference in behavior on the days that the kids had dress down days. And it really got me thinking. And here's my question to you, Jeremy, and you in the audience, you answer for yourself. Jeremy, when you were a kid, when did you have to wear a shirt and tie? Uh, sports games, right? If we, if we had an away game for soccer, I had to wear a shirt and tie. Mm -hmm. Um, 
My bar mitzvah. Yep. Funerals and weddings. Correct. And my answer would have, for me, weddings and funerals, anytime I went to church, which we were not a big church-going family, but if we went to church, we put on a shirt and tie, all of those times are times where you have to be well-behaved. You are expected to be well-behaved. Uh, absolutely. And- I, I I didn't know where you were going with that at first, but I, com- I, I saw it about halfway. I completely agree. And so there's an expectation of behavior that connects with that exactly. style of dress. Correct. And so, uh, and I thought about this a lot when my brother started working full time remote from home. He realized pretty early on that, oh, shoot, when I get up to go to work, quote unquote work, I mean, he's working, but go to work is just he goes to his downstairs office. I can't do that in my pajamas. I have to put a, so he would actually put on a shirt and tie to go to work downstairs. And it's that mindset of being in this uniform for my brother or for at the school, it was a shirt and tie in the dojo for me, karate dojo. It's putting on my gi. It definitely changes my frame of mind. Uh, And I think that's an important thing to not overlook. Yeah. Uh, behavior is very, very closely tied to environment. And if you want the best proof of that, anyone who as an adult has been on a, a charter vehicle that happened to be a public school bus, even if it wasn't an actual public school bus, if it was a yellow bus, you can watch people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s completely regress to childish behavior. It is fascinating. Mm. And so I think we are at the first place where you and I, you know, we certainly agree and we find value in a traditional martial arts uniform in that by wearing it, it gives us the ability to reframe behavior. Mm -hmm. Once that uniform is on, once the belt is on, you are expected to act in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's certainly some some benefit to having a mm. uniform. Um, are there other benefits? We you mentioned as well that with a uniform at a public at a private school, the not getting judged at all because everyone's wearing the same thing. I think that's an important part of it too. Everyone is wearing the same thing, so there's no quote unquote hierarchy in terms of clothing other than our belt system, which is separate. Yeah. And I would, I would look at it as, you know, let's, so, you know, we, we talk often about my school in these more recent episodes, the last year or so of episodes, we have classes one day a week. Uh, looks like that's changing to two days a week. So this might start to shift a little bit, but for the folks coming one day a week, they've got a week to wash their gi. Yep. Yep. They don't have to worry. Oh, you know, this is the gi I wore last week. Yeah. If I show up with this gi again, I'm going to feel funny. In fact, almost all of my students have one gi. Mm-hmm. Great. Works out pretty well. Yeah. Right? So it, it just, it's, we live in a world where there's so much to think about and worry about and plan out. And this is one thing you don't have to. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um are there other benefits to having a uniform that you can think of? There are different uh, uh, drills and movements that you're going to do. If some, you know, for, for anybody that runs any kind of grappling, whether it's, you know, a, a stand up Japanese jujitsu or, or, or groundwork or, or anything, you know, that a lot of that, uh, a curriculum, if you start trying to implement that with a t-shirt and shorts, your best case scenario is that it's going to get stretched out. It yeah. could rip. You know, it's it's just, it's not built for that. And that's why, you know, Nogi BJJ has taken on kind of its own uniform, right? Originally, it was just meant to be, my understanding, you know, not wearing a gi and Nogi became a certain type of uniform in its own right. Yeah. And... I like when my students, you know, not, not all my students wear geese. Uh, that's a whole other subject we could, we could get into. I don't think it's really appropriate now, but bottom line, my students, they don't wear a belt if they don't wear a gi, right? I have, I have one yellow belt student who just doesn't wear, wear a gi. She's got a belt. I gave her a belt. Mm-hmm. She just, 
It's not important or that's fine. Yep. Yep. There are certain movements that just don't work the same. Yeah. Yeah. And I as would... we progress in our curriculum, as things become more advanced, there's going to be stuff where it's going to be like, I, I, I can't show you this. You don't have a collar, right? Like yeah. I can grab your t-shirt. It's just not the same as, I mean, even your hoodie, you're wearing a hoodie for those that are listening versus watching. Andrew's got a, a dragon hoodie on. Is that the, the Kathy one? Nope. This is the purple. That's the purple. Okay. I can't, I couldn't quite tell. Um, I could still manipulate like a, a, a collar choke mm -hmm. on that sweatshirt in a way that I just can't in this t-shirt. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. The, the one I was going to go to was you hit it in your, just your chat. There was uh, just durability. It just, it's not as durable. You know, I can do some of those slight chokes, like you said, on that t-shirt and I can, I can modify it to make it work, but you're not going to want to wear that t-shirt afterwards. No, you know, no, as opposed to a, a, uniform a gi which not all of them are made of heavy heavy canvas but they're still going to be thicker stronger material than a t-shirt so i think yeah. that's a, a benefit as well yeah one of the things that uh happens that newer martial artists might not realize this they, they might initially find this to be a surprise because i remember when i somebody explained this to me as a kid i was initially surprised the idea that a heavyweight uniform up until the point where it is completely soaked with sweat is actually cooler than a lighter weight one because that's going to get soaked faster. So what I do is I'll wear a polyester t-shirt on a hot day because mm -hmm. where we train has no AC and very little airflow. I'll wear a polyester tee under a heavyweight gi and that combination, I stay relatively cool. Yeah. And I'll work with my students and they're just, they're soaked through because they're wearing lighter weight uniforms. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. There, I see that as a benefit because you're probably not show you prop. I don't think very many people own a heavyweight cotton canvas sweatshirt or long sleeve shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's something right. about the fact that it's cotton that makes a difference. Yeah, uh, for sure. And, and if so. Yeah. An upside. So, so let's talk about some of the downsides of having uniform. Sure. Um, the first one I can think of is our gi pants give lots of mobility, but I rarely I rarely wear my gi pants outside of class. And I think the biggest one that we would both agree on is that right there, that when we have to utilize our art in an actual ability to defend ourselves out on the street, we're not going to have, uh, we're not going to be at bare feet. We're not going to have our gi pants on. Our mobility is going to be restricted. So if we only train in a uniform when we have to utilize it, I think that can be a little more challenging. We've talked about this a number of times, the, the fact that we both agree training in your street clothes, the, the clothing that you are most likely to get into an altercation in from time to time and understanding the differences between that uniform and your street clothes is rather important. You know, specifically footwear, I think, is the most important piece. Yep. And if you're only ever training in you know, your traditional uniform, it, it's, I'm not going to say it's false confidence, but I think it's false context for yeah, how you are going to move when, where, how you need and want to. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I, I would agree. Cause it is very, very different. Um, and that's not, I don't want to go to the extreme and never train in uniform. Um, and, Doing moves in high heels, I'm sure, is incredibly different than in bare feet. I don't know. I've not worn high heels, but I can imagine it's very, very different. Uh, I'm sure the women in the audience are nodding their heads profusely. Yeah, of course it's going to be different. Um, so that's definitely a, a, a downside to it. Um, depending on how often you train, here's another downside. You might need multiple uniforms. 
multiple geese. There uh, can be an expense there, right? So absolutely. If, if you're someone who is really passionate and let's say you're training two, three hours a day and, you know, maybe you're training three, four, five. I mean, we, we've certainly talked to plenty of people on the show who train six, seven days a week. You're probably going to need it. Even if you're really good at getting that laundry turned over, it, well, at least what three, three uniforms? At least, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And there's an expense there. There's yep. time there, right? Like that versus, you know, a, a heavyweight gi, even a medium weight gi, dobok, etc. The weight on that, you know, if you've ever had two or three heavyweight uniforms in a a top load washing machine that got off center. You know just yeah. those uniforms versus the rest of your laundry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The less, rest of the laundry do, doesn't hold a candle to what those weigh when they're fully wet. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's some time and expense. There and and sure. I think the financial aspect you have to keep in mind, even the super cheap, cheap, cheap geese, which I have no problem with. I Most of mine are because, uh, you know, I'm a self-employed musician, so I don't have a lot of disposable disposable income. Um, you, you're looking at forty to fifty dollars for a cheap gi, and yeah. if you're looking to get a nicer weight, heavier weight gi, you're looking at seventy five dollars. Heavyweight gi, nice, really nice. You're looking at a hundred to sometimes two hundred dollars. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so and I just recently took. You know, I have all my uniforms. I had four or five gis, all with my school patch on it. Well, I've now left that school. Hmm. So some of those patches I can unsew, but some of them were were heat were ironed on. So like I basically can't wear that uniform now. I have to buy a bunch of more uniforms and put on the new patch for the new school that I'm training in. That's more expense. So yep. I think that can't yep. be not talked or thought of as well. And, and my recommendation to folks out there who might be rapidly progressing into, hey, this is something I love and I want to do it often. Start with cheap ones and just periodically replace, right? Um, if you've been to a whistle kick event in probably the last five years, you've probably seen me wear a heavyweight black. It's actually an Aiki Jitsu gi. Mm -hmm. That gi, I've had it for 15 years and it was handed off to me by somebody else. It's probably 20 to 25 years old. Other than the black is a little gray at this point, you wouldn't know. It's it, it's an awesome, awesome deep. And it's one of those things that when you, you know, buy once, cry once sort of a thing. Yeah, exactly. So just keep replacing. It doesn't mean I don't have others. But. Yeah. So other, other downsides to the uniform. There's a big one we haven't talked about. And it's just as it can help set behavior and help people feel like, this is where I am. This is how I act. What about the people who start and they don't have it yet? Exactly. Right? There's a reason that a lot of martial arts schools, as part of the introductory class, give away a uniform or they, they wrap it into the cost, right? Because they want people to feel like they belong, like they're not separate and outside. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Th there's definitely that uh, I'm not good enough sort of mentality, like, Everyone else has one and I don't and I feel left out. It's the team jersey. Yep. Yep. Exactly. It's the and team colors, the team hat. It's the varsity pin. It's the jacket. It's the it's the, the, the basketball team shoes, right? Like there's there's a solidarity, especially when you come in from the outside. Yeah. And you don't understand the movements. You you see the colored belts, and maybe you can say it looks like that person's more competent than that person, but you don't really have a good understanding of what's happening to say, I can see the differences. Almost yeah. everything you see is the same. And the most readily visible symbol of, uh, of uniformity, the uniform, you don't have. Exactly. It's, it's the, when, it's the team jersey, and you showed up wanting to be on the team, but you're not good enough yet. And you, you don't have the jersey yet, which yeah. can make people feel left out. And we don't want people to feel left out. Right? Yep. And so that that's kind of where, you know, a, a, a little bit of an aside, that's why it works pretty well at my school. We have students who do and who don't. 
and we just don't make a big thing about it. So when someone yeah. starts, they see people who, I mean, my, my students, regardless of what they're wearing, line up in their spot, right? So yeah. we've, we've got people who line up, you know, ahead of other people who are wearing yeah. uniforms. And I know for a lot of people that would be really weird. That's a whole other different subject. That we can get into. <laughs> We're not going there now. Anything else we want to put on the table with this? I th Not in terms of uniform, but I do think we should talk about wearing, like not having uniform. Like what are the pros and cons of not having uniform? It's cheaper, easier to launder. Yep. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I hear from a lot of martial arts schools is availability, right? Mm -hmm. Oh man, we've got to get these uniforms. Maybe you, you have them patched or printed with your logo or something that's not something that you can just order online yeah. and have delivered tomorrow yeah i'm putting in an order maybe, maybe you order. can but cer you certainly don't have the availability yeah. right versus you know if you're wearing a school t-shirt as part of your uniform if that's the thing that ties everyone together well you can you know, even if you're in a, a fairly small town, you can probably drive an hour and get half a dozen places that can print T-shirts for you. Yep, exactly. Yep. And it has become – the printing of stuff has become so much easier in the – even in the last 10 years. Uh, I mean, I have sitting behind me right here – for those that are watching, you have to you, – you can see it. If you're only listening, you have to envision what I'm pointing at. But it's a heat press. I can do my own T-shirts. Mm -hmm. for myself or now I'm going to be able to do my own school's uniforms. Like rat, we don't have to print patches. It's like, give me your gi top. I can put the logo right on it, right on the chest or f something for on the back for, you know, whatever our school probably won't do that, but um, I could, you don't even yeah. need to go to a t-shirt place. It's lots of options. Now, if your school does do t-shirts, you might design a shirt where you tell people, hey, you know what? You can wear, you have to wear this to training. But if you want to wear it out and about, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Right? Maybe it's advertising. Maybe there, there's an aspect of that for you. Yep. Yep. But I th I think that's a, I think that's about it that I can think of. Is there anything that you can think of that we're missing? I think the last thing that we haven't really talked about is, um, and, and again, what would happen with a new a newer student, wearing a uniform is weird. It's strange. It's foreign. Mm -hmm. And if you have someone, especially if it's someone who is reluctant, you know, like the parents are really encouraging a child. And let's face it, I, I've never put on a martial arts uniform that I would call conventionally comfortable. Yeah. Right. They're comfortable because I'm used to them. But if I yeah. compare the fabric and the way it feels versus just about everything else I own, I'm not quite as comfortable. Yeah. Especially so that. Especially if it's a new gi that's never been worn yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I do get a new heavyweight one, just as an as uh, aside for everyone, it stays in the washer in the dryer for a while. I do not try to wear that right away. I wash it with, you know, way too much fabric softener and I dry it on low until it is bone dry. Yes, low. And then it goes back in the wash with the next wash. And, and it took um, my most recent belt. I think that was about 15 washes before I could wear it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I think that's it. I think that's all I got. You know, we might have some folks out there who have some thoughts and I'd certainly love to hear from them. As would I. <clears throat> yeah, we've got the Facebook group, Martial Arts Radio, Facebook page. I keep calling it a group. We retired the group. My apologies. The Facebook page, Martial Arts Radio. Of course, you can leave comments at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you've got private comments, you can let Andrew or I know, Jeremy at Andrew at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick, and we post this stuff everywhere. You know, so if, if you have other stuff to add, we want to hear it. And of course, if you have a subject for conversation around this two schools of thought context, right? What are we doing with this? We're taking the, the conventional martial arts arguments. You should do this. You shouldn't do that. And we're approaching it in a more balanced, healthy, 
uh, less arrogant way. And I know a lot of you out there are really enjoying that. So I, I'm glad that we have the ability to do it. Anything else we should tell them before we call no, it? I think, that, I think that's good. All right. Well, thanks for being here, everyone. We appreciate you. Reach out if we can do anything. Until next time, train hard. Sm smile. Smile. And have a great have a day. Have a great day. <laughs> have a great day. That was so bad. Reach out if we can do anything. Until next time, train hard. Sm smile. Smile. And have a great day. Have a great day. day. <laughs> have a great day. That was so bad. You pointed it yourself, and I still went. I, I... <laughs> how how many people watch to the end now just to see us? How we do that? Oh, I, I don't know because we don't do it at every one. But the recent right. ones, we have had a handful of fun things at the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>